started. So what we want to do is create this shape, starting with our pencil, and we're going to focus on the bell-like shape here, okay, and we want to work in the upper corner. So I'm going to start with a very smooth smile and a hill, okay? And you can take your time and readjust things as you like. Once we have that, we're going to add some bumps to the bottom, okay? And we're going to fill in the inside here. Okay, and you might notice I don't have enough room for four full ones, so I'll do three and a half. All right. And if you remember, you should always draw very lightly, but I'm drawing a little bit harder just to make sure everyone can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to put some spikes on top of those little bumps. And remember, you can always pause when you need a minute. Okay, then we'll add some circles in between the points just to make it a little more interesting to look at. Okay. And because this is a much smaller surface than this, you'll notice we don't have as much room for detail. But you could sneak in some detail where you like. So I'll put some zigzags in there. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about the, the details inside of my leaf shapes here or inside the points. They look fine just the way they are. Okay, now we're going to create a nice tail for our jellyfish. And in order to do the tail, we need to create a bent carrot shape. So go ahead and draw a bent carrot shape. And then put another bent carrot shape inside. So it's like two carrots. And then you can fill that line, the outer edge, with some lines if you like. Just like that. If you want to put some curved lines inside to make it more interesting, you can. On the end of this here, we're going we're to create another wiggly line. So I'm going to follow this curve here. And I'm going to go zoop, and then I'm going to go zoop back, and notice how those two lines meet up together, okay? And again, I'm going to draw a line on one side. I'll fill this in with a couple fun little lines, some detail lines if you like. We're going to put some of those fun, bumpy fluffs here. Okay, and then we're going to put this beautiful curl in. So to do that, we're going to come down to the bottom, just like before, line it all up, do a hook, and then start at the end of the hook and work your ba way back up. Okay, it may look a little different than mine, but that's okay. And then we can continue to put some bumps all the way around the edge. We can fill it in a little bit with some more of those fun detail lines to pull it all together. And then we're going to fill things in a little bit up top. Okay, so we're going to go back up to this space right here. I'm going to draw a curl. Okay, so I'm going to start here and I'm going to go around and around and around. On the outside of that curl, I'm going to fill it full of those fluffy bumps. On the other side, I'm going to draw a curve and another curve, and then put some bigger bumps, almost like flower petals, okay? And if you want to put some flower petal details inside, go for it, okay? Finally, we're going to add some more things up here just to pull it together. Okay, and then we got to add these big tentacles. So what I suggest is draw the first two big tentacles first. So I'm going to go woo, woo, and see how I curl it in at the end? And then I just go straight back up. 
Okay, so there's one on this side, the nice big one on this side. And then I'm going to put this one in here. Same thing. There we go. Just like that. Okay, then I can put in some smaller ones. Like that. Don't feel like you have to squish them all in if you don't want to. If you think that your jellyfish looks better with just a couple tentacles, well, by all means, go for it. Okay, so I've got three tentacles over here, and I'm going to leave it at that. This one has four, but that's okay. And then over here, I'm going to come along again. Like that. Like that. And I think I can have one more snuck in this big tangled mess. Okay, look how fun that is. So fun. So then I'm gonna take my handy dandy marker and we're just gonna outline everything. Okay, so we're just gonna go over our pencil with our marker. Anything that you drew with your pencil should be covered with marker. Otherwise the ink will cover it up You can also use the marker to adjust your lines if you look at them and you think, oh, I don't like what I did there. That's okay. You can use the marker to fine tune things. Okay. So now we've got the top of our jellyfish done. I'm going to go on to some of the detail work. Those bent carrots with the swirly lines inside and some fun short detail lines on the edge. And then we'll continue that. like that. Then I'll bring in those nice fun bumps. And those bumps are going to continue on that curl. So I'm just going to finish the curl while I'm here. And then I can do all of the fun, cute little bumps. And the reason we're drawing the bumps is because if you've seen a jellyfish in real life, they have these frilly bits. So I'm going to do that nice swirl with some more bumps. Okay. I'm going to put in that flower detail here with some inner detail lines, just like that. And then, of course, we can put some more big details near the top here, and then we can put in our tentacles. Now, if you notice on my drawing, we've got lots of designs inside the tentacles, and you are more than welcome to do that. So I'm just going to show you a little bit because it's so easy to do. You don't have to use the pencil, but if you think you might make a mistake, it's a good idea to do it with pencil first. That way you can erase your mistakes or you can just turn whatever happens into a happy accident and make the best of it. So it's up to you, okay? And really what I try to do when I do designs inside of the tentacles is make sure that they don't get confused. It's easy to tell which one is which still. So I'm going to make this one full of stripes, okay? And I think this back one here would make a good one for stripes too, okay? And then this one here, I'm going to do zigzags all the way through, okay? And I'll do zigzags through here. So I'm going to come on this side, and then I'm going to come on this side. Boom. And over here, we have lots of these lines here. I think I'll do a nice zigzag tentacle on the first tentacle that we drew. And fill the rest in with those line segments. Okay? From there, we need our ink. So we're going to work on our background first. So you're going to need your turquoise. And it might be hard to see the colors. Okay. So 
So your turquoise paint. Okay. There. So keep it nice and close. Okay. We're going to use lots of water just like we did. Okay. So we're going to use just water. And we're going to outline our jellyfish with just water. Okay, and you can use a little bit or a lot. It's hard to see, I know. But as long as you're going around the edges, try not to go inside the jellyfish, because then our ink will want to go inside the jellyfish. The really great thing about the ink we work with is that the water can control the ink. So wherever you put water, the ink will go. And anywhere there's no water, the ink won't go unless you put it there. The downside is if you accidentally put water in the wrong place, the ink will go there. And you'll see what I mean in a moment, because I've probably made some mistakes here or there, and that's okay. Okay, so don't forget these little bits inside or in between your jellyfish tentacles. There, and then I'm going to just do some scribbling in the background. So I'm just scribbling with wet, with a wet brush. Okay. And you're like, I don't see a thing. You're right. It's because I'm scribbling with water. And if you got down nice and close, you could see. But you'll see in a minute. So now I'm going to take some of that turquoise and I'm going to bring it in. Nice and close to my jellyfish where the water is and just be careful with it. Okay, and I'm going to outline my whole jellyfish like this and you'll notice, see how it's spreading out where the water is? Okay. And you can just have as much fun with this as you want. If you want the whole background to be really, really vibrant turquoise, well, by all means, go right ahead. But if you use a little bit of water, this stuff gets really light. And it'll look like a beautiful ocean water. Kind of like what's going on here. Now, I did use two colors when I used that. I used a little bit of green to get that greeny look. So if you still have... Um, so you do have some yellow in your kit. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. I'm going to just scribble, scribble, scribble. And again, I'm scribbling, 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 and notice how I'm just using water to scribble. And I'm just making these circular motions because it makes it look a little bit more fluffy. It helps the water spread out its own way. I'm not trying to control the water. Okay. But don't worry if you're like, oh, but I want it to be brighter. That's okay. I'm going to show you something really fun. And if you did our June box with the fox, you might know what's happening next. You're waiting for the wildness, because there's definitely a, some wildness that's going to happen in just a moment. Okay. So I've spread it around as best as I can. Now I'm going to dip my brush in there, and I'm going to hold my finger out like this. And I'm going to sprinkle some dots of paint. Now you'll notice they spread out very quickly. I can also just dab my brush wherever I think I need some more. You can do as many or as little as you like, but these will spread out automatically because your canvas is so wet. Oh, see, look, I forgot to paint in here. Okay, remember I said don't forget to paint in the little spots? Well, I almost forgot. No big deal because I got it done now. 
Okay, so you're just going to use this and you can spread them out any way you like. Okay. There. And when you think there's enough ink on there, you can leave it to dry. It won't take very long. If you put it in the sunshine, it won't take very long at all. Okay, so leave it to dry. While you're waiting for it to dry, I want you to get your other colors, okay? So we should have a pink, a purple, and a yellow. So find those other ink colors and get ready because when this is dry, we're going to be able to do the next step, okay? Okay, so now that our background is dry, we can paint in our jellyfish. And I have my yellow, my purple, and my magenta ready to go. And if you want to use that turquoise, by all means, feel free to grab the turquoise. We're just going to paint in the different sections. I'll show you what this one looks like. So I always like to start with my lightest colors first. Okay, and you're just gonna paint in whatever sections you think should be yellow. And as a rule, I try to spread the colors out all over so it looks like our jellyfish is balanced. Okay, because that's what that's called is balanced. So see, I've kind of made sure that a little bit of yellow in every section. Remember, you don't have to paint yours like mine. You can make yours look any way you want. This is just a suggestion. So this jellyfish is gonna have lots of yellow. No, no, it's okay. notice there's some areas where oops I accidentally got some of my background color inside my jellyfish but it doesn't matter because as I paint along it'll all come together and it'll look just fine okay and I'm gonna switch out I'll take some purple because that sounds like fun to work with I'm gonna paint this section in here. So again, I'm trying to spread out a little bit of purple in all of the areas so that it looks like the jellyfish is You might be thinking, oh my goodness, that's a lot of purple. But anything that I haven't painted with yellow or purple is going to be pink. Or, of course, if you want to use some of your turquoise or any of your colors from last month, you can do that too. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to get some magenta. And then this is really fun to add the third color because things start to come to life. Now you can also layer some of these colors. Okay, so pink and purple mixed together very nicely, pink and yellow mixed together very nicely, 
purple and yellow don't mix together nicely at all. Okay, so don't mix your yellow and purple. may take some time to fill in all these little areas, but that's okay. If you have to take a break or you need to pause because I'm going too fast, just pause, that's fine. If you need to take a break because you've just been working too hard and you need a little break, that's okay too. Remember if you make a mistake, it's no big deal. Now, if you find it difficult to paint into some of these smaller areas, you can always let the first color dry before trying to put in the second color. That way they don't blend. Look at that, look at how beautiful that is. Beautiful, okay? And if you really feel inspired, you could take a little bit more of that turquoise and you can put in some more splatters around your background if you think that it would look cool. It's totally up to you. Okay, make sure to sign it when it's all dry and then find a great place to hang it up or give it to someone you love because art always makes people smile. So make sure you show off your work. Make sure you find somebody that We'll appreciate it if you want to give it to somebody or add it to your gallery at home and show it off to the people that come and visit you. Okay, I'd love to see anybody uh, try to do this again. I know last month we had some people take the Fox tutorial. They did it into a painting and then they took the extra stuff and they did watercolor uh, drawings on nice paper. So whatever you feel inspired to do, by all means, please do it and share what you do, because I would love to see what you get up to this month, okay? So thank you, and happy painting, everybody.